All right, Glenn Kendall with Concourse Hosting here. I'm going to show you this workbook, Ranking Cohorts by Who Donated the Most. Uh, I'm on Tableau Public on my profile page there. Just click on the workbook and then download workbook. And in we go down the rabbit hole. All right. Uh, this workbook I've gone through quite a few iterations on and uh, arrived at this layout for it. And I love this layout. I'm just so mesmerized and intrigued by this layout because it's almost like a puzzle. It's like, what, what do these numbers mean? And, you know, it just kind of invites you in to kind of figure out what, what's happening here. And, you know, why is this a one and this is a one and, you know, what are, what are these rankings actually refer to? So what this is about is you first define a cohort. So in this particular case, I say a cohort is a group of people who started giving to your organization for the first time in a certain year. Just like, you know, alumni graduating from a certain year, it's like cohorts are really alumni of your organization. The year they started giving, that's the year they first started, you know, being associated with you. So to compare how cohort giving happens year over year, a lot of times what happens is somebody gives, they're really enthusiastic the first year, and then you know, over time, enthusiasm kind of peters out and the cohort participation drops off. However, every once in a while, you will have a cohort that remains engaged or will even get more engaged later on. And so this is a way you can compare how cohorts are behaving as, you know, with your donations uh, compared to each other over time. So what we're looking at here is that this is a ranking. So this just ranks each year to say which cohort ranked number one gave more than their peers for a particular year. So these uh, rows down here are the cohorts. So this is the cohort of the year 2008 cohort of year 2009, etc. just doing 10 years worth. And then the columns are the years. These are the years they donated. So for example, in the year 2008, the cohort 2008 was the only cohort that we're looking at, so they gave 100% of the donations. The next year, 2009, the 2009 cohort gave most of the money. 2008 cohort, eh, not so much, only 2%. 2010, the 2009 cohort was still ranked number one. And 2008 did very well. And 2010 kind of, you know, didn't keep that trend going of a new cohort giving the most. They were only ranked third. And then when I mouse over it here, I can see more details that shows how much percentage they gave, their rank, and all that sort of stuff. So there's two main things happening in the visualization. One is the rank. So this is ranked for all the cohorts for a particular given year, one through however many cohorts there were. Uh, the second part is the color. So the color is related to the percentage that they donated as a, as a percentage of the total. So a darker blue means a higher percentage and a lighter blue is a, a lesser percentage. So we can see here, you know, like this particular one is different than this particular one is different than this particular one. So those, the colors again, is, is a percentage of the total. So I think, you know, it makes it just intriguing to me that way where you have both the color and the rankings going on there and, uh, and then you can mouse over to get more. When I first made this workbook, I just put the percentage in there, and the percentage is cool as well. I mean, you can do that, uh, but I think the problem is, is that you know your brain is having to do math to figure out, you know, 47% and 38% and 12% and you know, I mean, if you think about it, you can think which ones are bigger than the others, and the color helps with that. But by just doing a simple ranking, you know, it's just intuitive to see who's number one, who's number two, who's number three, and all of that. Um, so that's the gist of, you know, what's going on in this workbook. The other extra trick that I had to do when I first demoed this 
uh, for some people is that I actually had rankings and numbers down here in this lower left quadrant as well that didn't make sense because they couldn't have actually given that year. So I revised it and hid all of these numbers, hid all of these data fields. Because, you know, in the year 2008, there wasn't a 2011 cohort or really any other cohort. That's the first year they could have started giving is, you know, the year that they became a cohort. So let's go through the pills now, go through the dimensions and the calculated fields and show you how that's uh, set up. So in terms of the actual data, we just have gift date, we have gift records ID, gift type, and gift ID. The difference between gift record and gift ID is that gift ID is an ID associated with the gift, gift records is associated with the person or the constituent. So records ID is like a blackboard vernacular, razor's edge really. Uh, that's, this is sample data from the razor's edge. So a records ID is a person. Uh, down here, we just have gift amount. The rest of these are calculated fields. So we'll start with cohort. So this is a calculated field. To create the cohort, what is a cohort? A cohort is a person. The gift records ID is a person. Is a person who started giving for the first time or the minimum gift date, or in this case, gift date FY, uh, which is just the fiscal year of the gift date. I get the year part of this date, because it's going to return a date, so I get the year part of it, turn it into a string, and append year of in front of it. So that's how you define the cohorts. Uh, for the So now for making the, the visualization over here, I'll go down to um, those, those other calculated fields in a second. Uh, it's just the year in the columns and the cohort in the rows. Again, these are the cohorts where it says year of, those are cohorts, and then the actual years where the money is donated is in the columns over here. Okay. Um, I also put gift date and cohort in the filter, um, just editing it just so I'm only looking at 10 years worth of data at a time. Eleven years in this case, because it's inclusive. Okay, um, so now to the complexity, the fun part of this. Uh, so the first thing I do is define a rank, the cohort rank. To do a ranking in Tableau, use this feature called index. Um, it creates a table calculation which is just going to rank everything, and I'm telling it I'm going to rank the cohorts. Pretty easy. Uh, the next is I do a year rank, basically doing the same thing. Um, the reason I'm ranking the years is because I create another calculated field here to called show cohort rank. And I say, hey, if the year rank it's greater than or equal to the cohort rank, then show the cohort rank or you know return that cohort rank. And that allows me to hide these values down here. So anything that falls out of that range is basically going to be null and won't show up. So I pull show cohort rank over here into the label. So that allows me to show the rank. Uh, so now this is the fun part, this is the tricky part, is defining this table calculation. So what I'm doing is I'm telling it, hey, I want you to calculate this rank across a specific dimension, which is the year of the gift date. So that's really the key in these table calculations. You have to say what it's relative to, how it's doing the calculation. So I'm doing it by year, by year of the gift date. So it's ranking according to this. All the cohorts for a given year are ranked.
as far as the, and then what it's ranked by, sorry, I, I have one more thing here I need to show you, and that is by some specific dimensions. Um, and what it is is the sum of the donations, right? That's what it's ranking by, is this field here, the sum of the donations. That's that cohort rank. It's a little bit complicated because it's a nested calculation, as you can see here. So this one is the year rank, and this one's the cohort rank. So the cohort rank is what is returned by the show cohort rank field. And so I'm actually um, doing the calculation. I'm computing by the year and the cohort, actually, and then telling it what you're ranking by is the sum of the donations descending. So biggest one gets number one, second biggest gets number two, et cetera. And when you're in here doing the table calculation, it kind of shows you what values it's, it's coming up with just in those little brackets just as a handy you know, tip while you're working on it, and then you click away and it goes away after that. For the color, um, this one is just a percent of the total. So the color is just a quick table calculation that I'm doing a percent of the total. However, you have to tell it how you're doing the percentage of the total. In this case, I'm doing it down, down being by the year. So the percentage of the total just across all of these guys here. And uh, for the percent of donations, um, kind of doing the same thing here. showing the percent of donations uh, across the cohort. And that's just what shows up in my tooltip. So you'll want to play with these table calculations and make sure that you're you know, getting the right order that the calculations are happening in. But yeah, when you figure it out, um, there's some really you know cool stuff that you can do and uh, help you know, organize your data, because when you look at it, the actual calculated fields that we're doing are not very complicated. All of the complexity is happening within the table calculations and getting down to the nitty gritty of defining those calculations themselves. Um, so that's it for today. Um, if you want to learn more about how to do future workbooks like this and tune into our webinars, uh, I do a webinar every month that uh, basically introduces a new workbook like this. We focus on working with nonprofits, and we're using data from the Razor's Edge and Blackbot CRM to do that. So text concourse to 345345. Uh, that'll get you on our mailing list. Basically, it sends you a, a text and says, hey, send us your email address, then we'll add you to the to the email list after that. Don't worry, we won't send you other texts other than this. This is just to get you on the list. So yeah, join the list. Um, we'll tell you about upcoming webinars, other Tableau tips and whatnot, and uh, you can learn about using Tableau in all sorts of cool new ways. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.